I was never told the magic formula, which is if you like something, keep doing it a bunch and then you'll get better at it. Welcome to It's All A Dream with me, Nathan. Today I'm joined by David. David, if you want to introduce yourself, let the people know who you are and what it is you do. My name's David Speed and I make art. Amazing. So was it always your dream to be an artist and kind of go down that avenue? Definitely not. Um, I think that looking back on my childhood, I, I, I would say that becoming a movie star or a pop star or something would, would be more of a uh, an achievable goal than becoming an artist because you would you would hear those stories of like oh this person like kept singing and they went to they got discovered or they were busking in the subway and someone walked past them and all, all of those kind of stories like um and then posting on youtube the whole the whole like ed sheeran thing how that came about those seemed like okay that's how you can break up there was never any of those stories to be an artist and i i started painting in the year 2000 so 20 three long years ago now that was the first time I ever picked up a spray can and back then street art was not seen as anything like it is today um, graffiti or street art was just seen as this like underground art form that really was was out of fashion in the 2000s like it had had its boom period in the 80s and 90s and then really by 2000 it was not trendy it was not cool it was not like it was really just this like nuisance that people wanted to get rid of um and and so for it to be a career was not like there was there there was no one to look at who was a street artist who would be doing it for a career um and then even back being being a kid like i i was interested in art and i was doing my coloring books and drawing he-man and the turtles in my in my notebooks and stuff but i was never um encouraged like oh this could be your career one day that was that was never on the table so you would say it wasn't a career more, but it was it was passion, but it wasn't really a career because it didn't seem like a, an achievable career. I think it was something that I liked. It was ne I was never told the magic formula, which is if you like something, keep doing it a bunch and then you'll get better at it. And I wish I had been told that because I was just what I was told was there are some people who are gifted or talented and there are some people who are not. So I figured, well, I must be in the cap camp of not talented, not I'm in the in the camp of not talented yet. But if you work at this, you will get good at it. So I, w I got C for GCSE art. I was just like kind of like pottering along doing doing what I was doing. I enjoyed it, but I didn't know that if I dedicate myself to this and I and I throw myself into it, that I'll become really good at it. Um, so I think I mean, I look at those I look at the early photos that I've got of my stuff back in the in the 2000s, like just bad graffiti, really terrible um, trying to get to grips with a spray can, which is I mean, of all the mediums I've used outside of a tattoo machine, I would say that the spray can is like, yeah, so spray can is the second hardest behind a tattoo machine, tattoo machine being uh, yeah, drawing. I, I once heard tattooing described as drawing with a vibrating brick on a moving canvas, which like the, that sums it up. So that's probably the hardest medium. But second to that is spray paint. You've got this paint hurtling out of the can at a million miles an hour heading towards the wall. And then you've got to control that and make it bend to your will, which is really really hard so I look back on those those early paintings and what kept me going back to graffiti wasn't the the thought that I was going to get good at it it was the experiences that I had with my mates so it was a camaraderie between only like three two or three people um that we just enjoyed spending time to, with each other we enjoyed painting in the places that other people couldn't work out how to get to um we enjoyed putting art out there for our peers maybe the public but it was again it was early 2000s it wasn't really understood like that um and but yeah so we were i think i mean a lot of i painted illegally for like a good sort of 10 year period 
um, from 2000 to 2010. And during that time, I definitely wasn't focused in vandalism and destruction. I was focused in like creating something like trying to trying to bring some sort of light, joy, colour to people's days. Um, and I, I wasn't so I, I wasn't painting on like people's cars or, or or like a small business shop owner or anything like that. I, like I, I, that really sucks. I really fucking hate that when I see like loads of tags over over a small business or something like that. It's like, do you do you understand what we're supposed to be? <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you understand? Do you understand like as a as a community or as a culture? what we're trying to like you could go and draw all over marks and spencers like and i i don't really care but but to draw over a small business it, it that kind of upsets me but um but yeah man i, I was never out to cause disru- destruction i was just out to, to to sort of create something and then as a side effect through having those fun times through being out with my mates what came from that is my talent started to increase it started to grow my pieces started to become better. And that was probably about five years into that. That was when I started to realize like, oh, there is, there is an improvement curve here. And I could become a really good artist if I dedicate myself to this. And that, that's when I sort of started to get more serious about stuff. And I think if I could go back and talk to young me who definitely wouldn't listen to old me, but it would just be like, don't spend your time on the stuff that doesn't matter because I spent my 20s for sure like worrying about stupid shit and spending my time in silly places and I think that my my achievements would have come so much faster if I'd forgotten all of the bullshit that doesn't matter and just focused on like the art is the most important thing it's it's not the um it's not social media it's not it's not reaching out to galleries or famous people or whatever it's it's just making the work that is the most important thing it always comes back to the work and if you keep focusing on the craft everything else starts to align itself with that yeah okay that's pretty cool and that's quite it's quite interesting to hear you say that social media isn't your main point there as well you know because i think a lot of people make stuff for the purpose of social media or not to improve does that make sense yeah dude i think that's I think that's frightening to be honest like if you're making work just to create content it's like if you look at one of my reels or one of my tiktoks like you're going to be on the page for 15 seconds like max so 15 seconds but what has gone into creating that 15 second video is maybe a day maybe two hours maybe six hours like it takes a long time much longer to create the work than than 15 seconds and I think when you're in the middle of like a say a three day mural and you're up a scissor lift and you're painting a massive wall, if you're only making that for a piece of con, like there has to be something more than that that keeps you going. Then, I mean, for me anyway, like I can't, you can't survive on that vapid sort of temporary high of getting a bunch of likes. It's not sustainable. It it it's enjoyable, but then like the way that the algorithms are crafted, like one day that could all disappear. And if your self-esteem and your your purpose as an artist or a creator is is built around how well a video does, that's that's a recipe for destru- destruction for, for your own mental health, for your own like continuing to be a creator. But you have to have other parameters. I think if I if I look at a painting and no one buys it and the and the the, the real of it doesn't do very well on social media that could be seen as a failure. But if I like that painting, that painting is a success. Because it at the end of the day, like why why are you making your work? Like who are you making it for? There's I'm I'm working on my new show at the moment, which opens on October the fifth. And at that show there's there's pieces I've made for that show that aren't going into the show because they're they're may because I know that they're maybe not like commercially viable or there's other pieces that that are gonna have more impact. But it doesn't mean that those pieces were not a success even if the only success is in the making of that piece where you like learn something that didn't work as opposed to like something that does work and then because i mean if you if you create a a perfect video or a, or a song that that like is is the best of your ability you don't learn as much from that as when you 
do something where you make a small mistake in it and then that can be like if we're if we're using songs as an analogy like you you played the wrong chord but there's something about that little jarring noise that the way that it went wrong that you're actually like hang on there, there could be something here and you build upon that and it's exactly the same with with making a painting for me it's like i'll i'll do something wrong and from that something will grow and i think once my like once this show is over i want to like <laughs> I'm, I'm obsessed with apples at the moment i'm going to lock myself in my studio and i'm going to paint apples until i go insane and probably the work won't be financial like financially viable it might not sell or whatever like like but that's not my goal with it my goal isn't to, to go and paint these apples that get loads of likes on social media my goal is to make myself go insane because something will come out of that forced um project of, of just sitting there making these apples i know because once i've made 20 apples like something will have to change like i'll have to innovate in some way and from those innovations i will learn something or i'll learn what not to do so do you know what i mean it's like it's putting yourself in those situations that's amazing do you know what i've never really looked at it in that way on how you measure success you know because that's right success isn't necessarily based on did it go viral or anything like that is did i gain a new skill did i did i break where i normally like did i move to where i normally stop you know and that's it's really interesting to hear how that success can be measured as well which i've never really thought of so i'm, I'm quite impressed with that myself yeah i mean if you if you go viral then like you got lucky um and i mean there there are obviously there are certain things that so it, it's like when i first started putting up videos i put up one minute time lapses and then i realized people's attention spans are so short i i shortened that down to 15 seconds so it's like the 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 creator in me wants you to watch for longer but it's like i know that people aren't going to watch a time like my my longer videos now have a uh, voiceover over the top because then i know what i'm talking about is going to pe- keep people entertained for longer so it's like you you work out certain strategies and stuff that will will work but again that's just that's just through t- trial and error and rather than like sticking with one formula that works like trying different things and 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 like seeing what works um but really like going viral is is so much of that is down to luck and maybe if you'd posted it 30 seconds earlier the first person who would had seen it on the algorithm would would have pushed it out to all of these people it's like it's such a a, a game of luck that I, what i would much rather rely on is like knowing that that really it's it's me in my studio with a canvas in front of me the camera just happens to be rolling in the back but what happens is is what happens in those 6 hours that people don't see in the time lapse that's where that's where the the war happens it's like i I was talking to a lady the other day who who came to collect a print from my studio and um, she takes so much joy from painting. And I wish I was like that. And and I, I and if you can be like that, I'd, I just love it. But like I know friends who, who I've got who edit videos and I don't know if you're the same, like that can be a, uh, it's like a war. It's like a real slog. And you're and you're like it's like bit by bit. And I'm the same with 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 a big painting on a canvas. It's like. I know that a canvas is going to take like the canvas I'm working on at the moment that's going into this show. Um, I've spent so far a hundred hours on it. It's, it's by far and away the the longest that I've ever spent on a painting. And I look at that bastard sitting there sometimes, and I'm just like, oh, it's it's a war, man. And that's what people don't see on a fifteen second painting clip is you in the studio battling with yourself getting yourself into flow state meditating while while you're creating this work um like not to get too hippy dippy but you do go to another place it's like creatives know this like when you get into what they call flow state when you get into that space like and your your hands are you're you're not having to think about the actions that your that your hands are making because they're so um by this stage you've you've done it so many times that it is also almost on automatic and your brain goes to this place and you can you can have spent six hours and think that you've only spent two it's like time loses it's it's sort of you you lose track of time and um that's that's a magic space to be and that's what it's about the camera that's rolling in the back that's just that's just capturing it for um 
for prosperity, um, for for the for the necessity of if you want to be a successful artist or creator these days, and you don't have any, you're you're not an industry plant, you don't have any um, family or friends or connections within a set biz the the business that you want to get big in. If you don't have those, then really your main source should be working out working out social media because it's a, it's a set of skills that you can be the most incredible painter in the world but if you don't have the skills to create an engaging piece of social media content for your followers then you're not going to do as well as those that have worked that out so um, I do believe it's very important for your career but it shouldn't be the thing that drives you for sure. Yeah, that's cool man. So what would you say inspired you to kind of follow the street art and artistry avenue? Um, so I, I have a little bit of that fuck you in me where, uh, one of my tutors at uni said that art was not a realistic career option and that I should be more, I should be more realistic. Um, and so (laughs) a big part of my success is proving her wrong. Um, which I mean, I don't want people to get bogged down in, in, we were talking about this off mic earlier, like don't want people to get bogged down in the negativity there is too much of it in the world but if you can harness it and use it as a driver that's that is certainly something that I that I did um she said that it it couldn't be a career so I kind of wanted to prove that it that it would be um I think my next so in 2010 I started a business with a couple of other artists um that we we created like billboards and advertisements and the work that I'm well, like I was never known as David Speed. We were just known under our company name, um, which is called Joy Collective. They they are still making work and, and are incredible. Um, but over the last three years, I've stepped away from that and become known as David Speed myself, which is something that I never did think would happen. I was always happy to make work under my company name. And I always thought that that would be that would be the thing. Um, but during the pandemic, all of our all of our clients disappeared um, at Joy Collective and, and I kind of just started putting out my work that I'd been making for fun that I didn't expect to be popular but just accidentally sort of became really popular um I think I was really lucky in in the timing of we have a pandemic there's no one out on the streets and all of these shops are boarded up so I'm coming up to all these boarded up shops and I'm creating art on them which is not hurting anyone like like I said earlier like when with my previous like I stopped painting illegally in 2010 and then started painting in the streets again in in 2020 and but I knew again I wasn't hurting anyone because I knew these these were temporary boards that were going up outside these places of business that were going to get thrown away as soon as we opened up again and so on a very like local basis I just got known around East London where I live Shoreditch um, as all of a sudden these like neon pink portraits were popping up and, and it sort of kind of got some attention. Um, so that was really lucky in terms of timing. And then also um, August 2020 is when Instagram first started putting out reels. So I've been playing around with TikTok before that stage. Um, and so when reels came along, I was like, oh, I've been doing videos on this other platform. Let me just pop the same sort of things on Instagram. Um, and then they went, catastrophic like they they just went insane so all of a sudden I had uh this sort of sort of like small local following of people in East London and then those videos that I was making in my community started going a little bit bigger um and in yeah August 2020 then I really started started to grow on Instagram um and that brought around again having no gallery affiliations no knowledge of anyone in the art market it was not something that I ever thought I would be a part of Um, I never thought I would be able to create work as an independent artist Um, but yeah it's it's a really like recent um, thing of like yeah just in the last three years I've realized actually maybe I could become successful at this. Yeah that's cool one so how old was you when you so you said you started spray painting in 2000 how old would you have been around that time? Uh, I think I was 18 in 2000 yeah okay amazing and then what what sort of age would you say you was when you kind of discovered that this was a career and and probably a dream an an achievable dream at that point so i would say 
I would say as things started to change through the early 2000s, um, I, I think as I, I think as podcasting started to grow, I think podcasts are such, and we've spoken about this before. I think podcasts are such a great avenue to um, to distill knowledge. And it wasn't until I started listening to podcasts with other creative stories on, which is why I'm always like happy to jump on people's pods. It's like getting these stories out there. The more that that becomes your fabric, the more that you listen to that sort of stuff, the more that you start to realise like this is maybe a thing that could happen to me if it happened to to this guy who um i think when when you can find story like i think it's it's really good to have like really diverse stories because as soon as you can find someone who's come from like a similar background as you or or um or even like the same country as you and, and has achieved something then it starts to put it in a, in perspective as that as that is something that you might be able to achieve so i think as i started to hear more stories um and listen to more podcasts um that was when it was really it was really just this gradual these gradual building blocks as well as like projects that I would do that would start to have success. I mean, really when we, so I first started our business when I was 27. So that was 2010. And I think when we first started that, that business, you realize like you don't have a portfolio other than like work I created on the streets. You don't really have a portfolio. So we started to make it for ourselves. So we just go like, okay, what is a, what is a dream job? Um, so so one project that we did like um do you, you know box park like obviously box park are really huge now um but they were just starting in 2010 so we saw that they were going to open box park in shoreditch i think that was the first one but they were going to open box park i think we got a flyer through our through our office door we were renting this tiny little office that was like filled with spray cans it was like all we could afford it was it was like this big leap into like having our own space because previous to that we'd been in an old garage in south norwood um, that was just like 50 quid a month, like bung to a mate. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then, then we decided, okay, like, no, we're going to, we're going to like be where the street art is, which is in Shoreditch. And we're going to like open this small office space. So we opened up there. We got a flyer through the door for the opening of box parks. So we got in contact with them and we were like, let's do a, a collaborative, like opening launch thing to get people interested in your, in your opening and like get people to be like brand awareness with us. So we we came up with box art at Box Park and we just got a load of cardboard boxes because they're dirt cheap. Like we had we had nothing, you know, we got 100 boxes and we painted 100 boxes. It took us forever. Like each one had like its own individual like designs on. And there were probably like there was like so there were three artists at the core. We probably roped in like another six artists to just even like we were like, even if you can do two or ten, like just just help us out with some boxes. We got 100 boxes. And then we ran this like competition where uh, if you if you put your email address in, like you could be chosen to. So then we then had like 200, 500, however many emails. Box Park had 500 emails to like market to, like come to our opening launch, whatever. We gave away these boxes. But then all of a sudden you've got like a case study that you can put up on your website of like we didn't get we didn't make any money from it. But what we had was like a portfolio of what well, firstly we had 100 um paintings that we've made so that was a load of content for the website of like look we we like here's art that we've created um and then we also had like we've we've done an event we've done an event that people actually showed up to because people wanted to get these these like free pieces of art um and it just like yeah it was it was creating our own opportunities and i think when you do some when you do a project like that and you're worried like is is all of this going to be a waste of time is no one going to turn up and you do it and it's a success that that builds your your resilience and you're and you're like okay we're on to a winner like maybe maybe this is a good idea and maybe we can turn it into something yeah and do you know it's quite cool as well um because i had another guest who mentioned about this and I, it's kind of always been my outlook especially with business is kind of what is the purpose of like for example this event why am i going to it is it money is it networking or is it just pleasure like i can do it for free i mean Sometimes I do music stuff for free because they don't always have the budget, but it's a good place to network and I just get enjoyment out of it. So it, it's definitely one of those things where, especially with business, you've kind of got to measure up what is the purpose of this, you know? So, I Dude, my career, my career is built on free work for sure. A hundred percent. Like I've built my career on free work, I think. Um, so, so like um, I've, 
one of my paintings, this continues to blow my mind, but um, Sha Shaquille O'Neal's got one of my paintings and his people reached out to me. They were like, Shaq really likes your work. Like, would you, would you make a painting for him? I never once discussed money. And I know Shaq goes around the mall and gives out a hundred dollars. Like the guy is a multi, multi-millionaire who could easily, but like whatever, I, I did not mention money once because my goal going into that relationship was because what they said, they were like, oh, can you paint a mural of Shaq and he'll post it on his stories. And so my business brain then goes, OK, so painting a mural of Shaq and that going on his stories, that's cool. But is that can I maximise this opportunity? Is that the maximum I could get from it? What values me more is Shaq holding a piece of my artwork. So rather than me painting it on a wall in London, let me paint it on a canvas and send it to you. So I spoke to his people. I was like, can you pay the shipping for me to because this is when I first started, I didn't have like much cash. And um, I'm like, to, to ship a canvas is going to cost me like 300 quid. Can you pay for the shipping? They were like, absolutely. Painted it. I wasn't even sure if it was going to happen. I wasn't even sure if I was going to get the photo. But I painted Shaq's mug, sent it off to them. I, I've now got a photo of Sha Shaq holding my work. And um, one of my followers actually sent me a, a clip of um, one of his kids' YouTube channels. You can see it hanging in the back. So I know it's in his house. I know it's hanging there, which is really cool. Um, but I never discussed money once because it's like you, you could... Uh, like if I start shouting out like, oh, I want a million dollars for this, then like those DMs are going to go cold. Do you know what I mean? For It's far more valuable. Like the long last, like the, 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 the repeat use I get out of every now and then just throwing that picture because you get new followers all the time. If you throw that picture on your stories, it builds credibility. People go, oh shit, Shaq's worked with him. All of a sudden that's, that's a, the, the value that I've got from that, you can't really put a monetary cost on that do you know what I mean that's so much more valuable to me so I always say to creatives like there's there's more than just money to to think about of what you can gain from a situation I think the trap with free work is when a company contacts you and like so you're not contacting them they're they're the ones that are contacting you as soon as they contact you like I say you have the power but if a contact contacts you and and they a company contacts you and they say we want you to produce this video for us for free then that's when I say to you, like, what is in it for you? Is it is it a brand that you've always wanted to work for? And in your list of clients on your showreel, on your site, you would love to have, I don't know, Adidas as listed on your client list. If so, then maybe maybe you do do it for free. Yeah, so so the problem is if, is if a company contacts you and they're just looking to exploit you, they're going to put that video out on their social media. You're not going to get a credit for it, which... That's like if we're going to talk about bugbears or negativity, people not crediting is my like is my number one thing. I hate it when people don't credit, especially small creators like like you. Uh, what have you got to lose if you're a powerhouse with hundreds of thousands of followers? What have you got to lose by giving a shout out to another creator? It blows my I don't know why people won't do it. Maybe it's one of those scarcity mindset things of like they don't want to give the juice to it. Anyway, uh, they're willing to they're willing to take all of their creativity from them, but then they won't big them up for it. It it drives me insane. But um, yeah, I just think that's the reason why there's trepidation around free work is because there's too many people out there who are looking to exploit. But when someone approaches you and says, "I want you to do this for free," just instead of writing it off straight off the bat, just think: Is there something else? from this it could just be like yeah i'll do it for you if you make an introduction to me to this person because you know that they're hooked up or whatever so i think there's a lot that and and to to blanket statement of like oh, i so disrespect i can't pay my bills with exposure that's a big one everyone always says that oh yeah oh let me just tell my landlord i'm going to pay them in, in exposure exposure is in the right spaces exposure is actually really useful now i'd much rather you get a paycheck and pay your rent but can you can you use that exposure to to get your rent paid in other ways? Do you know what I mean? Like, is that going to lead to more jobs for you? So rather than just completely having a blanket statement of I don't do free work, think about what there is to be gained. Because if you can come up with a partnership with someone, um, I mean, like I said, my career is built on free work. So like I've got clients now who pay good money, who our, our initial um, stages are, have been in the free stage. So, yeah, always consider it. Yeah, a thousand percent. I mean, I think it's funny because, I mean, I've been doing photography and videography for 10 years. 
I got my first paid bit of work in the October of 2021. That was the first time I got paid for any work ever. Yeah. And and it, it meant the world to me because I was like, it was 250 quid. I was I was shooting a gig at the Royal Albert Hall. I was like, this is amazing. Like I would have done it for free, but they want for to sure. And, that, and when they reached out at the time, I was like, I messaged my brother and said, I was like, holy shit, like Blackstone Cherry have asked me to go shoot their show at Royal Albert Hall. And that I was like, I've, these were like the first band they ever listened to. And that is like, hey, how much are you going to charge them? I was like, I'm not going to. Like, just to be able to be there with them is, is cool. I would have brought a ticket. So for yeah, sure, I've yeah. saved myself 30, 30, 40 quid or whatever it, like their ticket prices was. But, and it is one of those things like, and how we mentioned before as well about, um, like being a new podcast it's hard to get guests on and stuff like that but luckily i've been blessed with having a variety of guests and some big names to jump on and that and I, that's all been based through just like networking and kind of a reputation of my my personal brand of like nathan um and that which is quite cool because i kind of reached out to all those guys that i've either worked with along the lines and i just sent him a text I was like hey this is what I'm doing would you be down to be on and that and I, like you said they probably weighed it up because I mean like I didn't pay any of them so they probably weighed it up of like right he's done some stuff for me in the past I, I'll, I'll give him a favor back or something like that you know so I appreciate like all that side of it and I think often people definitely overlook that that free side of it and I'm like you can get a long way by doing some free stuff for the right people, you know, and that just because they're not giving you a shout out in on Instagram, it doesn't mean they're not going back to an office full of potential new clients and saying your name as well. So I think that's definitely one of my biggest bits of advice for anybody is like acknowledge the free work. Don't just disregard it. Yeah. I think every single thing that you want to happen, whatever your wildest dream is, there is someone in the world who can make that happen because everything it, like nothing is going to happen in a vacuum. You need, you, you need people to listen to your song. You need people to come to your event. You need people to, to um, visit your gallery. Like these are all things that you, ev everything to be a successful as a creator, you need outside forces. You need other people and whatever your, whatever the most insane thing that you can think of, whatever it might be, there's a like if I said um, I want to put a painting in space, there's someone who can make. Do you know what I mean there's someone who can make that happen? And that's just me thinking of the most stupid thing I can think on the spot. Like there is there is someone that can make that happen. So whatever it is that you want to do, that that all will will all come down to relationships. So that that's a ladder of like I mean starting a podcast is so, like it's a fucking phenomenal way to network because you can have a guest like you you talk to each other for an hour you build a rapport with each other and then at some point that like there'll be some guests you'll never hear from again there'll be some guests that you just vibe with you keep in touch with you leave a comment on their social media every now and then so you're remembering each other and then all of a sudden something will pop up and you'll go can you connect me with so and so and it's it's just the way to make things happen and i think as you build those relationships you get closer and closer to the to meeting the people who are going to facilitate the stuff that you want to happen whatever that stuff might be whether it's like your first sale of a painting or whether it's sending a painting to mars like like there, there's just a chain of people that you've got to get to and maybe you're right down at the bottom when you're just starting and you, maybe you don't know anyone yet you're just starting to get on the ladder. But eventually, as time passes, because time always passes, you're going to meet new people. And as long as you keep going, keep creating good work, then those people are going to talk to other people. You're going to ask to be connected with other people. And then you're going to get to those decision makers who are going to make the changes happen in your life that you want to happen. Yeah, 100%. So who would you say some of your idols was? To, uh, like that inspired you to keep going? I mean, I'm sure there's been days where you've wanted to quit or... Where, where you've done so much free work you're like okay maybe this is just more of a hobby than a career so yeah. who would you say kind of those idols or inspirations that kind of pushed you to keep going yeah dude i've heard you ask this question to other people on on the show and and i i really struggled to to come up with it with a good answer for you i think that 
so I, I found my like my 20s were hard man I really struggled in my 20s and I, I went through deep depression and um and I I always like when I see young creatives that are in their 20s and I and I recognize in them the stuff that I was I was going through I always try to be to them the voice that I could never find but I was looking for those idols and I I really just couldn't find it all I was finding was negativity and the the idea that that won't happen and that you won't make that and you won't become that and I find it found it really hard um and I think my my girlfriend slash business partner um I don't look at her as an idol but she was someone who believed in me um and still does to this day and we like we we set the business up together 13 years ago and I think when I've been having a wobble and when I've been going I'm not good enough or this painting's not very good or whatever it might be she's always been the one who's gone just keep going um in fact interesting story my most viral um instagram slash tiktok slash piece of video content um is this is this one painting that i mean that now has had multiple millions of views and a lot of people who followed me is because they've discovered me through this one painting i was halfway through that painting and it wasn't going as i expected and i called my girlfriend and i was like this is this sucks it's rubbish i sent her a photo i was like it's not very good i think i'm just going to blank it out and start I'll, I'll come back tomorrow i'm in a bad mood it's shit i'm going to come back we'll finish this tomorrow and she was like just just carry on with it just give it another hour then phone me back like i gave it another hour phoned her back i was like yeah, do you know what it's actually it's starting to come together it's not perfect but she's like keep going keep going she pushed me forward to keep going and i if I hadn't had that conversation with her, I would have blanked it out. hundred percent. I would have blanked it out. And it, and it ended up being like one of those key, those key pieces. Cause it, we talked about going viral earlier. You can never plan the videos that are going to go viral. It will always be the one that you don't expect. It's like, for me, it's just like, you just keep producing and over a long enough timeline, some of them are going to hit with people. Um, so it was just another it was just another video I never expected it to go viral but if I hadn't made it it's one of those key ones that I can look back on and just go it was the the really the first one that really put me on the map of some people and and um, through through it I got shared by My Modern Met which is a, like a really big um, account I think they've got like a huge like I think they've got a million on Facebook like just the eyeballs that it managed to bring to my work and I was going to quit so um, she is someone I I think having having like i in my 20s i sacrificed a lot of relationships through because if you've got a garden you can only tend to so many plants at once and i think that everything everything has a cost and if you want to become a really if you want to become really good at what you do other things in your life are going to suffer and a lot of times that is relationships with friends so i've still got my day oneers who like had my back and and were going to stick behind me um, but all those peripheral kind of relationships, they they really just sort of faded by because, oh, he's not going to come to the pub. He's not going to come out with us. He's not going to go raving like because he does this art thing and he, that's all he spends his time on, which is kind of a bit boring. So you lose those relationships. But those those day oneers that you've got that they see it and they're like, do you know what? We know that you're not going to see us as often, but we know that you're working on this thing that's really important and we're there for you. So um, so I put them in the same vein. It, it's really having there wasn't anyone that like I've I've not put a poster of anyone on my wall. The, do you know what I did put on my wall is I wrote on a scrap of paper talk minus action equals zero. I, and I put that on my wall because I realized in I realized early I must have had that from 22, 23. I must have written that. I, I I like I'm really quite proud of it. I've never really said it online before. I've never put it out there because I know it's one of those things that could easily go into the ether and I'd never get credit for it. Um, and I know that it could be co-opted, you know, like you start talking about things in a podcast sometimes and then it just becomes people will parrot it and they'll take it. And I'm, I'm sure now I've said it on this pod, it will probably become a thing. But talk minus action equals zero. I realized in my very early 20s that everyone was talking about these big ideas and no one fucking did anything because they got the adrenaline of talking about yeah i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that 
so few people actually put their feet into the actions, like taking the steps to make it actually fucking happen. So talk minus action equals zero. That was my idol. That was my, that was what I looked to. I never had a poster of anyone on my wall. I, I saw, um, I know, um, you, you've said in the past that Michael Jordan was one for you. I couldn't parlay someone's like someone's celebrity success in a sport. I couldn't parlay that into into my art I just some somehow in my brain I couldn't do that so really for me it was like it was believing in myself having my self-discipline um and then the support system of when my self-discipline was failing was looking to those who could bring me up which was just like my close inner circle yeah I, do you know what? I love that and I I'm I relate to you in that sense, to be fair, because I think having the correct support will be the best that you can ever have. You know, having people that believe in, like, you've got a vision, but then having other people that also believe and see your, they don't necessarily have to see the end vision, but they believe that you see the vision as well. And that, I mean, my partner is exactly the same. Like, I quit my job back in March and I was like, right, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to start and do my own thing. And it took, I, I literally started it last month. And I I got paid today for the first time since March. And that luckily she's been running the entire house, like, and that paying for my son, I like paying the cars. I got into a bit of debt due to obviously not having any income and stuff. But like, she helped me out and then like got some money and paid off more of my debt for my like and that and I think when you have somebody that supports you and trust in that as well is the biggest thing that could ever come out of it do you know what I mean that's definitely the biggest motivation there yeah I think I mean one thing that I say to to young creators is survival is the most important thing so the the much as like um much as quitting your job is like is what I, I want everyone to get to that stage where they can do what they love for a living I think that's that's the dream and I think it's totally achievable for anyone who works hard enough to get good really good at something I think I, I really think it's simple as that that m- might sound patronizing but like I truly believe like coming from like a working class family um, not having much cash growing up like um, starting a business at 27 like literally go like sleeping on friends couches like like moving back in with my mum and dad at 27 which was like not the look that I really wanted to go for selling my entire sneaker collection like but survival is the most important thing like I like as like even if you have to take a part-time job in order to sustain you to do what what you love amazing if you um if you've got a, a supportive partner or supportive parents or or whatever that that can help you out on the money side like if they can wipe out some debts for you amazing but if you don't have any of that then like it is still achievable it's still possible you've just got to be really smart how you go about it and you've just got to build it up to the stage where um all of a sudden you you reach that point where you where you can take that that big leap because as amazing as it will feel to go and like tell carol in accounts to fuck off and and throw your laptop out the window and walk out in like in a big dramatic moment that can feel wonderful but then then what do you do the next day the best thing to do and and the way that capitalism is is set up um i saw i saw a, a tiktok recently that was talking about this I, I, it's so interesting is like the way the capitalist system is is like make you so tired take so much from you that your creative side dies because by the time you get home from that from that job you are dead inside and you can't make your creative work because you've given so much during the day and and this tiktok was advocating to uh like basically give your bare minimum at your day job and work on your on your creative passions at night i mean whatever do do whatever works for you but i just think that survival is the most important thing you've got to make a paycheck um and yeah having that support system is amazing but if you don't have it just the self-belief and pushing yourself through the discipline that it takes in those early days when no one's listening, no one's paying attention to you and you're DMing people and they won't reply to you. It's keeping going. The people that keep going are the ones that win. Um, I, I, on my podcast, I interviewed a lady called Emma Gannon and 
she she always says like I'm not the best writer. She's a, she's a writer. She's like I'm not the best writer. I'm I just didn't stop. So I'm I'm all that's left for people to choose from because everyone who was better than me that quit like they're not an option anymore because but because I didn't quit I'm still here so I'm I'm the option and I I always loved that I think if you if you keep going um I mean we're looking at I was 38 when my solo career kicks off um I mean the work that I'm most known for now is my like my neon pink work uh the work that's hanging in the ha- in the house of Shaquille O'Neal 38 years old when I first started to to put that into place like it's not too late for you wherever you are wherever you are on the ladder if you've got a creative bone in your body and a, and a and it's inside you and it calls to you and it's something that you want to become like don't ignore it listen to it let it out wherever you can it might take you 20 years to get to that stage but if it does like it does like if you have to get there then you'll you'll sit through those 20 years like i i have yeah and i i mean i've heard a saying over the years is it takes like 10 years to become an overnight success do you know what i mean and and it is quite true when you when you measure people's journeys when they've been consistent for 10 years that's when they get that bit of success whether it be the first paycheck from it or whatever it might be like it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to do whatever but if you've like studied it and done it long enough you will get successful in it and I'll, i'll add to that i'll add to that is um three years from your first paycheck is when you first start to see a difference as well it's generally generally about three years if you as soon as you've managed to um do uh, as soon as you manage to go full time with something it then takes three years of working relentlessly like every single so 10 years to get to the point where you can do that thing on its own and then three years from when you see like you get your first paycheck three years later you'll be then then it'll be like regular paychecks and you'll all of all of a sudden start to see that you're getting noticed in places that you that you didn't expect before um throughout everyone i've interviewed uh, my podcast is called creative rebels we're on a it's been over a year hiatus now but um but there's a there's a vast back catalogue of of conversations i've had overwhelmingly the creators that i've messaged that i've i've overwhelmingly the creators that i've spoken to have said it took three years from first starting their thing and going for, like head first into it about three years when you really start to notice those big differences that's amazing well i can't wait to see mine um so what would you say has been your proudest moment in your career so far i think i think to be an independent artist who is able to make a full-time living doing something that they love um is all the success that 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 i was told that i was flat out told would not happen um i think i'm i'm really proud of just generally overall as a career um other than that my show that's opening on the 5th of october um if you head to my social media you'll find all of all of the details of of where to come and see that if you're if you're based in london or wherever you are in the world if you want to travel in and uh come and see my show um i'm really proud of this show i think it's the best work i've ever made in my career um it's 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 slightly in a different style to to the work that i'm used that people are used to seeing um so that is is a a bit nervy for me like i'm a bit nervous to to kind of unveil that work but um i'm definitely hugely proud of it um i i sold out my first show um all except for one painting so um we'll see we'll see how we do on this but again like i said to you before my success is not is not measured in like whether a painting sells it's um for me this is work that i really care about and i'm uh, i'm really interested for people to see it and hopefully take something from it i think as i was going to say as an artist but i guess it's just as a creator i think we make this work because we want people to feel something uh we want people to feel something when they listen to our podcast whether it's to be inspired or entertained or whatever it might be we want people to to feel something when they listen to our song or or watch our video or view our artwork and um and so yeah so the fact that i I've, I've come from making work that didn't really make people feel anything because it wasn't there yet to getting to this stage where i some people say to, I, this is so fucking wild to me and i guess it's because i'm only 3 years into to doing this as as like doing my neon stuff as as my career but there's people who say to me you're my favorite street artist and like 
that to me is insane dude because like i've come from my whole feed i mean now i don't follow any other street eyes because i try not to i don't want to get too influenced by everything that else is that, that's going on but i come from three years ago i followed like everyone connor harrington and d face and all of these like iconic street artists these people could choose from all of them they could choose from my heroes and they choose me as their favorite street artist that that is insane man that blows that blows me away so that is something that i'm really proud of if i can uh i think i'm not sure whether you said this on the podcast or whether we were talking off mic about this but our our legacy is is what we leave behind um i hope at some on some day when i'm long gone i hope my my paintings are they either exist in a digital form or they're hung on someone's wall and that those feelings can continue to happen um my my ghost will be very happy to know that someone's looking at my work and they're getting something from it yeah 100 percent. that's i i couldn't agree more to be honest with you from that artwork standpoint of just being able to see it live on you know i think that's definitely like a goal for me for sure and that and like you said it's just that emotion when like i remember um I done the tour of Machine Gun Kelly, and I got a picture what I had taken of him at the Wembley show. I got it, I got it printed when we was at the Birmingham show. I asked him if he'd sign it for me, and that, and he's like, "Yeah, sure." Like, come on, let's go. Like, let's go look at it. So I, I like I unroll it, and he's like, "Holy shit, did you take this?" And I was like, "Yeah," and that, and he's like, "I've got to go show Megan." So we go back to like we go into his dressing room. He's like, "Yo, Megan, look at this!" Like, and like, what the fuck, like stood in here with Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox and they're chatting about my work and that and then he's like I'll sign it if you get me a copy he's like I want my own one to put up so I was like okay yeah sure and that's so then when we was at like when I was doing the lead show of him and that like got a copy printed gave it to him and he's like yo Meg look, look like this has got to go up in the studio and I was like right wow like I love the photo but I was never expecting that reaction, you know? So it's definitely moments like that for me, which I'm like, I'm so glad that I've done that. Like those moments, you know, they're definitely the moments that make your career. Um, so final question really is to anybody watching, listening, what advice would you give them if they wanted to kind of follow in your footsteps, you know, you said you've got people that love you. You're their favorite artist. You probably inspired tons of people to pick up a spray can. Um, so to anybody watching that kind of wanted to follow that avenue professionally or even just more as a hobby, really, either or, what advice would you give to them? Um, give up now. Uh, it's too much hard work. Um, <laughs> um I think I think just saying like it's possible and you can do it. I think you need to look at your work objectively and and realize like realize how good it is. Um I think there's um one of those things that that has been talked about on podcasts and now is is sort of becoming like a mainstream thing is the taste gap. I uh, I've started to hear more and more people talking about this that when you first start do start doing something your your taste and your ability don't match up so you're following some of the best creators on in the world that you aspire to be like on on social media you're seeing their work and then you're producing work that is not as good as theirs and you know it's not as good as theirs the thing is to keep is to keep going um and that's my that, i mean i think i've probably said it about six times during this episode already is just keep going um there is no there is no more advice than that. Like everything else will, will, will work itself out. But if you love that thing enough, you just have to keep doing that thing. And in the doing of that thing, you will get better at it. The better that you get at it, the more people will discover that you're doing it. The more people that discover that you're doing it, the more opportunities you will get. And then you'll get to the position where you're able to do something that you really want to do. Perfect. And then if anybody wanted to follow you, stay connected with you, where can they get you? Um, I want everyone to come to my show. Uh, it opens on the 5th of October um, and then we'll be open for two weeks after that. Um, you can find me on all social media at David Speed UK. 
I'm on TikTok, Instagram, uh, X, um, all yeah, all of all of the socials um, at David Speed UK, and um, yeah, come to my show opens October the fifth. Uh, it's completely free, so you just uh, just turn up. the The opening night is on the fifth, so that will be ticketed. The tickets of that are going to go really fast, so uh, you need to be on my mailing list for that. The link to my mailing list is in my bio. Um, but if you're not worried about coming to the opening night and you just want to come and see the work, then it'll be open from, uh, like from the the sixth of October onwards. Uh, every day, eleven till four p.m. Completely free to attend. You don't need a ticket. Just show up, and it's at my studio, so you can come and see where all the work was made. Um, and I should I say this in public right okay I'm gonna make the pledge now that I will be there every single day of my show so I will be there to have a chat with everyone if you do come through so amazing thank you for tuning into this episode of it was all a dream we appreciate your time and support we hope that you enjoyed the episode and you feel inspired to achieve your dreams be sure to give us a follow on social media we're on Instagram TikTok YouTube and Twitter where you can contact us and stay connected with us if you have any feedback on the episodes or guest recommendations. Be sure to stick around after this to see what's upcoming in the next episode. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Fred Young. I play drums for the band Blackstone Cherry.